Welcome to this video. Now I'm going to cover the uh, Gripen or Gripen, depending on who's saying it, but I think someone from Sweden actually told me it's uh, Gripen, so I'll take their word for it. So in the Gripen, let's make something for the engine and uh, ductwork, right? I think that'll be next on our list because it sets us up so well to do the wings. So when we do the engine ductwork, um, we can see that the ductwork has a little gap between the edge of the canopy and the engine, and then it smoothly seems to blend into the body quite well. Um, we can also see in a different photo that there's sort of a pointy part, so we'll make that kind of separate from the uh, engine intake or ductwork. Interestingly, this fin right here was actually made for high angles of attack. Um, I think there was an incident where they lost a prototype to a pilot that had to eject at an air show due to a problem that they thought was resolved during development. And that I, I believe that that's the fin that, that came to be. Um, but don't quote me on that. I could have that wrong. Um, so anyway, let's go on to this plane because if I go to my right view and I change my view to be wireframe, you can see the engine starts right about this plane and there's a two degree draft, which I will address in a different way. This, this plane was made with professional and draft is only available in professional or maybe two of the three licenses, but it's not available in Atom, but it is such like not a big deal because it's so easy to deal with in this case. So it doesn't matter if we have draft or not really. Uh, so with that being said, we know what plane that we want to start on, right? Let's start on this one where the canopy is the highest. We'll go model, activate 2D sketch. And I want to make an outline of my inlet. Now I did this a little bit differently in uh, when making this initially and I want to try a different way of doing it altogether this way. So if you happen to have downloaded the model uh, that I made the pictures from, I'm going to be doing something totally different. I'm actually, let's draw two lines actually. Um, I'll grab an equal constraint. We'll set these to be equal. Move, well, I should shorten them. There we go. Kind of tricky to have equal lines floating in space. That looks to be about right though. Let me check the top view. That's pretty good. We just want the line to be barely outside of our, uh, of our body. I think we're actually just to the inside. Maybe I can move that a hair. In fact, that sketch right there is a good indicator of where the body ends. So I'm going to leave just a real tight gap. We'll reset the view. And I'll set the vertical distance here relative to the origin. Don't really care what that is. I just care about locking that dimension in. We'll move this well, yeah, right there is about right. We'll give this a horizontal distance here. Then we're fully defined. Next, I want to make a spline and just trace around this with a spline. Notice I'm using the same number of sketch elements that I had originally. So we're going to grab our spline here to here. And this might be kind of a funny looking thing if I add too many points and too few points. So it's, it's kind of tricky, but let's see if I can adjust this so that things look a bit more uniform. All right, so that looks like you have a little bit of a nice constant radius between those two. I think that looks not too bad, actually. Maybe we'll move this guy a little bit down, keep the flat. So we might want to consider adding an offset feature that will uh, create the hollowness when we go to loft this. Well, um, I made a quick example here. What I have 
um, two profiles, same number of sketch elements, right? And they have two loops between them. Kind of like what we're doing, just a lot more simple. When I go to loft this, I'll choose from here to here. And notice I get an error, right? Sketch with multiple loops not supported for lofts. So we'll work around this. First thing, I have my sketch here. We'll just deactivate that. And we're going to um, loft this as sort of a whole engine, right? like a whole solid piece. So the next thing, um, and you'll notice one other thing if I choose this plane, or actually to show you, let me just click on this sketch. So this is sketch six. We'll create an additive loft and we'll go to this engine. And when I go to loft between these two, I can't even say okay. The reason is sketch six is already used in a loft, right? So we're not gonna double dip like we do in FreeCAD or SolidWorks. So I'll start a sketch on this plane. And really it's pretty simple. I project to sketch, sketch number six. I uh, create a sketch figure, let's maintain figure type, maintain association to source entity, right? And so now I've just duplicated the sketch and if I update the sketch, it will update this profile as well. So a handy little uh, way of getting the exact same result. Now we'll go to loft. And in this case, now I've created two sketches, 17 and 18. I can even highlight, uh, well, I accidentally double clicked on it. So let's uh, actually deactivate our sketch, generate to last if we haven't already. Highlight sketch 17 and 18, there we go. I'll create an additive loft. And if I just say, okay, I better change my view to see this a little bit better. Shaded with visible edges, right? So we have this sort of intake that is kind of molding nice and smoothly into the body, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't really resonate with me, right? It doesn't look that realistic. It's kind of going into the canopy here. So let's make a few adjustments. Uh, the big thing, if I go back into my loft, sketch 17 is this forward sketch, and I want to specify a tangent. Let's try specifying a magnitude of two. Yep, still not quite there. So now I want to say uncheck minimize curvature. And of course my magnitude is too high for minimizing curvature. So I'm going to go back to one. One is a pretty safe bet. So now we're lofting normal, but it still looks kind of funky and not realistic when I go around here. So let's deal with that. So in loft, now we're going to go to sketch 18, also at 1. And of course, uh, these are too strong of magnitudes. So this is the kind of, you know, back and forth that can happen when you troubleshoot lofts. And I knew that this would happen, that there's a little bit of trial and error. But I think this is very valuable. And so sometimes I see someone do something in CAD and... I think, but what's the rationale, right? What's your thought process on getting there? So I don't want to do some perfect thing. That's looking a little bit better. And uh, not really explain a thought process on getting there. Now we're, we are getting suspiciously close to this canopy. So just to make sure, I'm going to edit again. And I'm going to make this 0.75 and let's see what happens there. That's not bad. So that's a different way of doing it than the other way that I've tried. Now, what do we do about having this be hollow? Well, I'm going to go to my loft. We see 0.1 and 0.8. So let's do a quick um, little work around here. I can sketch right on the face of this plane. Now we're going to say uh, model, activate 2D sketch. Now I know that that's sketch 17. So we're just going to project a reference figure this time of sketch 17 and we'll maintain association. And now I can highlight my reference figure. We're going to say offset. I'll flip direction. Point 0.1 seems okay. And uh, I'll close that. Let's do the same thing with sketch 18. So I guess I have to go to my right view to make sure I grab the right plane. 
activated 2D sketch. We'll project a sketch. We want a reference figure. We'll grab sketch 18 now. We'll maintain association. Now I can highlight that and grab an offset and deactivate. Now let's do a loft cut from sketch 20 to sketch 19. And with sketch 19, we want to have a tangent of 0.8 and a tangent here of 0.2. And it looks like I got something not quite right, so I'll check my first sketch again. But overall, the loft doesn't look horrible. Let's try this one more time here. I'm going to check my value that I put in, and it's 0.1 instead of 0.2. That's what the problem was. We'll generate the last feature here and grab our loft. 0.1. Bam, so that updated just fine. So you can see uh, when features go missing, it's really not that big of a deal. We didn't have multiple um, curve support for lofting, but we got around it just fine. And I think that that's looking pretty good. Let's do a mirror and see how it looks um, <laughs> on both sides. We'll go here, mirror plane, YZ, yeah, that's looking really good. Let's uh, save that before I forget. And I also want to mirror my cut. So I'm sure I can edit my mirror feature here and just select an inside face and that picked up that cut loft, just like in SolidWorks and other programs. That's pretty cool. So that would be the engines. I ought to probably call it here. Um, so I'll be excited to pick this up and uh, let's make some wings. I think it's about time. Hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.